President Reagan's vice president, George H.W. Bush, was elected president in 1988, he pledged to continue to implement the vision that had been put forward by the Reagan administration. The fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War left a new, confusing, and fluid global climate for foreign affairs. No longer would the United States be able to cling to a straightforward plan of action. In Kuwait, the United States launched Operation Desert Shield and Operation Desert Storm. Known as the First Gulf War, this was a short, successful, and popular military engagement for the United States. Even though the Gulf War was popular, President Bush was not re-elected in 1992. Instead, Bill Clinton came into office. Clinton was a Democrat and the governor of Arkansas. He campaigned on a platform of free trade, tax cuts, and welfare reform as a moderate, centrist Democrat. He drew younger voters to the polls after running a creative campaign in which he boarded the MTV bus and played the saxophone on the popular television show, The Arsenio Hall Show. The greatest accomplishment of Clinton's first term was NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. This agreement lifted the existing trade barriers between the United States, Mexico, and Canada. This led some factories to move to Mexico, which angered some labor unions. Clinton also revised the Department of Defense's ban on gay Americans serving their country in the armed forces. Clinton's policy was known as don't ask, don't tell. Under this policy, those entering the military were not to be asked about their sexual orientation. It also meant that gay and lesbian military personnel were required to keep their sexual orientation a secret. In the election of 2000, Vice President Al Gore ran against George W. Bush, son of George H. W. Bush. Both candidates ran as moderates. The election was extremely close, hinging on just 500,000 votes in Florida. The returns were contested and recounted. Finally, in the Supreme Court decision Bush v. Gore, the recount was stopped, and Bush was awarded the disputed Florida votes, giving him the presidency. The Bush presidency would be dramatically shaped by the terrorist attacks that were carried out against America on September 11, 2001. Members of the Islamic terrorist organization Al-Qaeda hijacked four airplanes. One crashed into the World Trade Center's North Tower. Another crashed into the South Tower minutes later. A third flight crashed into the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. The last plane crashed in a field in Pennsylvania, probably following a rebellion by the plane's passengers. The loss of 3,000 American lives was stunning to the country. Quickly, America went on the attack determined to track down the leaders of al-Qaeda. This would take the American military on a search for Osama bin Laden, the group's leader, into Afghanistan, where he was being protected by the nation's Islamic government, the Taliban. This so-called war on terror took the place of the Cold War in the American foreign policy agenda. Now the nation was committed to hunting down any group that posed a threat to the United States. This policy would take us into Afghanistan and Iraq. America's involvement in Iraq had been long-standing. By the early 2000s, the United States was criticizing Saddam Hussein's regime and insisting that they held weapons of mass destruction. American forces began bombing Iraq in March 2003, toppling the regime. In this photo, taken on the 1st of May, Sailors pose beneath a banner reading Mission Accomplished. Ironically, the mission would take much longer as United States forces would fight for years to try to control the insurgent forces that sought to take power in Iraq. There were also dramatic crises at home during the Bush administration. Most tragically, Hurricane Katrina swept through the Gulf Coast in 2005. As the storm hit New Orleans, the city flooded and thousands of low-income city residents without transportation out of the city were stranded. Some crowded into the Superdome. Others pooled their resources in order to survive. 
The nation and the world were shocked to see televised images of impoverished African Americans seemingly left to die, abandoned by their own government. In 2008, President Barack Obama was elected, becoming the first African American president in the nation's history. The greatest achievement of his administration's first term was the passage of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, known conversationally as Obamacare. This national health care law required all Americans to carry health insurance. While falling short of the more aggressive plans advocated by progressive politicians, the reform represented a significant expansion of the American safety net. President Obama also proved aggressive in the realm of foreign affairs, deploying 17,000 additional troops to Afghanistan in 2009. In May of 2011, U.S. Navy SEALs killed Osama bin Laden in Pakistan. As the nation moves forward, facing new challenges and opportunities, it does so with knowledge drawn from its past experiences. The end of the Cold War, we now know, did not mean the end of global tensions. For now, the United States remains a dominant global power, positioned to influence developments both within and without its borders.